Hey everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Olivia, and I'm here today with the mid-year watch list freakout tag, I guess, or the show freakout tag. It's pretty much the mid-year book freakout tag, but I'm changing the questions a little bit so I can do it on shows that I've watched this year. And this is like reality shows or Asian dramas or anime that I've watched this year. I'm gonna include all of those. Question one is the best show that I've watched so far in 2020. I would have to say that the best show I've watched so far was a rewatch. It's a Thai drama called Love by Chance. I love this drama a lot because it's just one of my first BL, which is boy love dramas. I'm pretty sure it's my first Thai drama as well, so it has a special place in my heart. This drama is about a boy named Pete and a boy named A, and they meet by chance. Pete wasn't watching where he was going one day because he was on his phone and a car almost hit him, but instead of getting hit by the car, he got hit by A's bike. So it was like a chance meeting, but out of that they grew a friendship and then it grew into a relationship and I just think it's really cute. And even though this is one of my favorite dramas, I honestly skip probably half of the scenes because there are four couples in this and I only watch A and Pete and Tin Can. I just don't really enjoy the other couples that much. And the reason why I like to say it's my favorite drama because I don't really do favorite dramas or shows. It just comes down to what's something that I will watch or rewatch a lot. And that's Love by Chance because I probably rewatched it about twice now. And I find myself just wanting to rewatch it when I'm down or feeling a little sad. And it always puts a smile on my face. But if I had to say a show that wasn't a rewatch, I would have to say that I really enjoyed watching The Circle this year. This show is on Netflix. I was in a phase of watching a lot of reality TV and I watched this with my family and it was so good. I just really liked the idea of the show. It is kind of like a survival social media kind of thing where there is a group of people and they can't see each other, they don't know each other, they're all strangers and the only way they can communicate is over the system. So they can't see each other and they don't know what each other looks like so they could catfish each other and try to be someone else in order to get farther because at the end the winner will get prize money for being the most popular. The contestants at the end of the show happened to be people that were originally in the beginning and I think that's really good and it made a lot of sense just because they've done so much and they made it that far so I feel like they kind of have a right to be together in the end. This show was heartwarming because there was real friendships in the midst of all the competition but it was still interesting because of the competition and they're just really sweet people and sweet stories and I just really love this show. I hope there's a season two. Question two is the best sequel I have watched in 2020 so far. I have probably only watched one sequel so that would be Show Me the Money 777 or Show Me the Money season seven. Show Me the Money is a hip-hop rap survival show and yes I do like the music. I like that hip-hop rap style. My ears really enjoy it. <laughs> this year really was all about the money and show me the money. <laughs> My favorite season of show me the money is season five because I really love BY and this year was pretty good as well. I want to watch season eight. It's been out for a while now but I'm not sure if all the subtitles are uploaded because it's not done officially. It's done by a great group of people. I watch it on K hip hop subs and I'm really appreciative of everything they do. Number three is a new release that I haven't watched yet but I want to and this would be The Shipper. This is currently airing. It's about a girl who is a fujoshi. They are people who like to see boys together and they ship boys so she's a shipper 
and she ships. I think it's like the sporty guy and the intellectual guy, and they're best friends. But the sporty guy has a girlfriend already, and then one day the intellectual guy gives her a ride home, I think, and then something happens, like a crash or something, and they end up having their soul swapped, so they switch bodies. As a result, she is in the boy's body, and she is trying to get her ship together, and there's also other components, like her best friend, who is also a Fujoshi, is starting to fall for her, and the guy's brother knows it's not him and he might start getting interested in her so i want to watch this because it seems interesting the plot intrigues me but i'm not a hundred percent sure how it will end or how much of a bl it actually is i'm very cautious about starting it i want to wait till it's finished and then i'll watch it and i'll see what other people have to say because I don't know how they're gonna go about this because they have to switch bodies back. I mean, they can't just let the poor boy, like, the poor boy's soul die. And when they switch back, I mean, I don't even understand how they can fix this or what the result will be, but I guess we'll find out. Number four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I would have to say it is Love by Chance Season 2. We're finally getting a Season 2, and I'm so excited, even though I'm really sad that Saint, who plays Pete, won't be there because they have some stuff. I'm happy where Saint is right now, and I love his newest work, Why Are You? I am excited to see what will happen with Tin Can because the ending of Tin Can's story in the first season was not what everyone wanted. I hope I will be able to watch the other couple like Techno and Kingla, I think his name is, something. They're probably the couple that interests me the least. I don't really like their story. And maybe we'll see some more of Tum Tar. I love Earth. I hope that I'll love their story too, and I can get into it more. Number five is my biggest disappointment so far in 2020, and I would have to say this is His Story 3, Make Our Days Count, but I wouldn't say it's technically a disappointment. It's just the ending, because of course I would have loved to see a happy ending, and I just feel like it's a real shame, especially since this couple was so loved and that was the couple that they did us dirty. <sighs> also, I'm not sure how I feel about the time jump. I agree with what someone else said in the comments I saw. They were saying that they would rather have seen the aftermath of how he dealt with the death instead of a time skip. But overall, I really love this series. I still will go back and watch it probably someday. I just will stop probably two episodes before the last one. Number six is the biggest surprise of 2020. And I would have to say that a anime that surprised me this year would be Demon Slayer. This was recommended by one of my friends and I was very skeptical because I didn't know much about this anime, but just the words demon slayer it didn't feel like my cup of tea i'm more of a romance kind of person but i'm trying to break out of that mold and expand into more genres and i'm very glad i watched this anime and i'm very glad that he recommended this to me because i loved it so much the artwork is really beautiful and i was never bored during it i love the story of the heroes and the stories of the villains or the demons they all had backstories too and i really thought that was cool and interesting another show that surprised me this year would be introverted boss i was just browsing netflix and i saw this and i decided to watch it i was very very cautious and skeptical about this because I do not have a good track record when it comes to dramas on Netflix. I hate dropping 
dramas, I usually just put them on hold and never touch them again because I don't like to say I dropped something. But all the ones that I plan to never watch again usually come from Netflix. However, I decided to give it a chance because, I mean, I don't really have anything else to do. I was just being really lazy that day. But I'm glad that I decided to watch it because it is so good. I loved it so much. It was 9.5 stars out of 10, I believe. I rated it. And this drama is so beautiful. The first few episodes were a little rough, but then after that, I got totally into it. And I feel like part of the reason why I wasn't into it right away was just because the plot is really complex, or at least to me it was. The drama looks really lighthearted and it's like, oh, it's just an energetic employee and a shy boss and then they're gonna change each other's lives and he's gonna break out of this shell because of her. And it was that, but it was so much more. This drama is centered around a deaf. It is the female lead's sister. So the female lead is named Rowun and the her sister is named Jihei. So Jihei died three years ago and it was said that it was all because of the boss and how he mistreated her because she was his secretary. Three years later, Rowan wanted to take revenge on the company so she decided to go and work for the company and she wanted to expose the CEO, the boss, for who he really was. However, along the way, she discovers he's not so bad after all, and she uncovers what actually happened to her sister in the mysteries, and it was just plot twist after plot twist. And usually I can catch them right before they happen, but there was actually one that I didn't catch, and it was who Jihei liked, and so I was, whew. But this drama was really beautiful. I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story and it was cute but serious but humorous and also can I just say the OST is on point. Number seven is my new favorite actor and I would have to say that is Wynn from Together. Wynn is just a good person. I feel like he is so cheerful and just a good actor. I don't know. I really like the series. And I really liked Wynn. Wynn's crying was really good too. And I don't know. He's just, he's just a bunny. <laughs> Number eight is my newest fictional crush. It's not really new, but I watched it this year. And I guess it's kind of new-ish because I don't really think of them as crushes. But now I guess I'll think of him as a crush, which is A, from Love by Chance. I just love how caring he is. He cares so much about his family. He is so good with his niece and he's so caring to Pete. I just love those protective kind of people who care and love and oh, they're so adorable. And I've always kind of gravitated to the more caring but also blunt, straightforward kind of people even though I don't really mesh with them well. I don't know. I'm kind of weird. Number nine is my newest favorite character, and that would be Nezuko from Demon Slayer. She is a demon of few words. She's really cool, and she still really cares about her brother, Tanjiro. The girl can also fight, so that's cool. Number 10 is shows that made me cry, and I would have to say Tarn Type because I remember I teared up. I'm not positive if I cried, but I definitely teared up when Tarn was just falling and Type broke up with Tarn and then Tarn went back home and he was just, he was crushed and it made me feel crushed and I swear I'm gonna start getting emotional. Oh my goodness. The other one that made me tear up and I think it might have made me cry was I Can Speak. This is a Korean movie. When the main character who is a elderly lady went to Washington DC and she gave her speech. She gave a speech because she is 
a comfort woman, and comfort women are women who were girls who were sex slaves for the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II. She wanted to give this speech to tell her story because a lot of comfort women weren't allowed to tell their story and no one said anything really and they just wanted a apology from Japan. I teared up and I think I cried a little during the speech. It was just such a moving speech. I really recommend watching this movie. It's a really good movie and it's just really heartwarming overall. Number 11 is shows that made me happy and I would also have to say Love by Chance but since I already use that a lot I will say and of Love. This is a three-part kind of drama. There are three parts of the series. The first one is called Tosara, the second one is Love Mechanics, and the third one is Love Story or This is a Love Story or something like that. I've seen both sides where people really like End of Love and a lot of people really don't because they're really short. Each kind of part only has two to four episodes but I just think that for what it was given, it did a really good job. And even if it's not like high quality and not like great depth or character development, it still just makes me happy. It puts a smile on my face. They're really cute. The Each couple is cute in their own way. Number 12 is the most beautiful show that I've watched so far this year. And I would have to say it's a movie called The Half of It. This movie is on Netflix. It is an American movie but it is about a Chinese American girl named Ali Chu. I wasn't originally going to watch this because I thought it would be predictable because it's about a girl who writes papers for money and this guy who wants to pay her to write a love letter to a girl and I'm like oh well they'll probably get together because that's what always happens. But then I found out that Allie likes girls too and she ends up falling in love with the girl that he likes. And so I watched it because I was like I don't know how this is gonna end because there's no way that either one of them can get the girl but what's gonna happen between them as well. I really like this movie. It gives me a lot of feels and I just really like Asian representation so that automatically gets some brownie points. I also just really enjoy the friendship. The friendship is so precious and you know sometimes a precious friendship is more important than a romance because that precious friendship will probably last longer than a romance anyway. Number 13 is shows that I need to watch by the end of the year. This includes just a lot of sequels that are going to come out and I'm very excited about like Love by Chance 2 that I mentioned earlier. There's also going to be a sequel for Together called Still Together. I'm interested to see how that goes because it is a 10 year time skip I believe. There will also be a second season of Time Type. I am not positive if that's this year or next year because I don't think there's a date set yet. The date on my drama list just says 2020. That's what I'm gonna go with. I also want to finish Flower Boy Next Door which is the drama I am currently watching. This one is actually a boy girl drama. <laughs> surprise surprise. It is about a girl who kind of shuts herself off from the world and there's this kind of love triangle thing and I don't understand why. I do love triangles because I don't like them but I looked through my watch list and plan to watch and they're like half love triangles so I don't understand my brain but this love triangle isn't that bad and the characters aren't that bad either so far. I am on episode 13 I believe out of 16 and I really like it so far. I like the relationship that's going on and I just really want to finish that and I will. It would kind of be embarrassing if I didn't by the end of the year. A more difficult feat 
that I want to accomplish is finishing Flavor It's Yours. This is a Chinese drama about how this girl and this guy, they accidentally kissed and this causes their taste buds to change because he has impeccable taste buds because he does stuff with wine and he needs his taste buds and then she is a girl who hasn't been able to taste anything for a really long time so their tasting skills switch which causes a lot, kind of a bit of chaos and there's also the problem that they can kiss each other to change their taste buds back but after a certain time period they change back so she would have his taste buds again and each time they kiss the time that they have gets shorter and shorter so eventually it'll probably be that they're stuck with each other's taste skills. The plot of this drama is really interesting, but I'm just having a really hard time getting through this drama. It's been kind of slow, kind of irritating. I don't love the characters 100% yet, but I'll keep trying. I'm not that far into it. I don't think I've even hit double digits. I'm probably on episode five or four. So I'll keep trying and I'll keep watching it and I hope I can finish it by the end of the year. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments what you liked, what you didn't like, if there's anything that I can do to improve, or if you have any video ideas. I know for sure that the next video I'm going to upload next will be another mid-year freakout tag, but it'll be for music. So stay tuned for that. Tell me down below how your day was, what you're doing, what you're watching, and if you have any recommendations for me, just let me know. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I will forever and always say that twice. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.